when I was a kid, really when I was in high school, one day I found myself flipping through a copy of National Geographic and thought these people go to all kinds of interesting places and do all sorts of interesting things and I would like to do that too. And I started kind of learning photography and realized pretty quickly that I wasn't any good at that, and, but I was a pretty good writer and so I went to journalism school for that. Um, and had ideas on going off and being a war correspondent, you know, dashing young reporter, and uh, ended up instead in Oklahoma City, where I work in an office. I got into journalism because I loved to write growing up, and I thought that would be a way to kind of make a career out of writing. And then once I, I didn't have any experience before college with, with journalism, and so once I really got into it, I quickly realized that it's so much more than, than writing. And actually my favorite part of the job is not that, it's, it's getting to go out and interview people and to, the people that I meet, is, that's now my favorite part of the job. I'd done breaking news reporting, so obviously I'd covered homicides and things like that, but as far as looking at cases this way, this was new for me. Our editor handed it to us and said, see what you can do with this. Um, and at first I was excited about it because I'd had some, I had some background in data journalism, but hadn't really ever done anything of this magnitude. So yeah, I was excited about the opportunity. The, the information we get about homicides is usually a person died at this address um, and that's, that's it. We may have a name, maybe not. Um, and so we cover them kind of like as a day-to-day -day thing, but nobody had really ever looked at this in any kind of depth at all. Like I mentioned, we inherited the project from another reporter. The thing that the police had given him and said, here's everything, was not half of everything. And so we spent months going through our own archives and going through court records and going through other things trying to figure out where the gaps were and eventually we figured out there's no way we can just do this piecemeal. We had to go back to the police and say that thing that you gave us isn't everything, where's the rest of it? At that age, birthdays are still a big event in a young person's life, and um, so it's hard to let that day pass without uh, taking time out to to um, remember him and, and to say happy birthday. I would say talking to the families was tough, um, just to hear their stories and how their lives were, were changed forever. and for the families we interviewed who had loved ones killed, whose cases haven't been solved, just to hear the, the pain and the anguish that they, they feel every day, living with that uncertainty, not knowing who killed their loved one, if they may pass that person on the sidewalk and not know it, that, that part of it was, was tough. You're catching people talking about the worst day in their lives. Um, and for most people, the worst day in their lives is something that happened and then they went on with their life. For these people, they're stuck with that. They're stuck with the worst thing that ever happened to them because they don't have any kind of closure at all. I'm not sure that desensitizes the right word. Um, it's not that you don't care. You cannot, when you're covering something like that, you can't internalize everything every day. You'd be a basket case. You'd lose your mind. You can't, you can't live your life that way. Um, so you do have to kind of find a balance between empathy and actually continuing to function as a human being. And I think everybody who does this for very long at all probably has to find that balance. Those stories are ones that I I will definitely carry with me for the rest of my life. And I, I think about those families a lot. I, I think about them, their birthdays, those milestones that we talked about. Um, I will always remember those. And so on those days, 
we'll, we'll think of them and um, we'll definitely carry the stories that they shared with me uh, through the rest of my life.